Hi, today's video is going to be on the three different forms that you're going to see your parabolas being written in. There's standard, vertex, and intercept form. And each form has its own unique information and information that it's helpful from that form. So the first one is standard form. We have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. From here, you have your a value, and your a value is going to tell you whether it has been reflected or not. So it's going to say whether or not it's opening up or opening down. Tells whether it opens up or down. Again, we know that based on whether or not it has been reflected which means if it's positive, it has not been reflected, so it's going to open up. Or if it's negative, it was reflected and it's going to open down. It also tells us whether we have a vertical stretch or expansion or a shrink or a compression. And remember, if your A value is greater than 1, it's a, an expansion or a stretch, if it's a, a fraction between 0 and 1, it's a shrink or a compression. Now what's unique about standard form is the C value. What the C value does is it tells you your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is going to be at 0, whatever that C value is, because we know that the y-intercept has an x value of 0. So if you were to plug 0 in for x here, that whole term becomes 0 this whole term becomes zero because the x is zero and you're just left with c. The next form that we have here is going to be vertex form. The general form for vertex form is y equals a parentheses x minus h quantity squared plus k. So if you remember all of the properties of a are still the same. So A, right out front here, is still going to tell us opens up or down. And a vertical stretch or shrink. So the A value is going to act the same. What's unique about vertex form, if you think about vertex form, is it tells you where your vertex is located. Your vertex is going to be at H. K. And remember, H is the horizontal shift the opposite way. So that's an H value. This is the vertical shift showing you that K value. So this, those transformations show you the coordinates of your vertex. And then our last one is intercept form. The general form of intercept form is A, parentheses, X minus P, and x minus q. Same thing, our a, exactly the same. It's going to show us whether it opens up or down. And it's going to show us whether it has a stretch or a shrink. What's unique about this one is that it's going to show us, if it's intercept form, it's going to show us our x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts we see P, so we're going to have one x-intercept at P0, x-intercepts have y values of 0, unlike the y-intercepts over here, and then we also have an x-intercept at Q0. So our three different forms, and each form tells us about our A value, but gives us a little bit different information. So our first one write the equation in standard form. If I look at my form here, you want to be able to look at an equation and identify which form it's in right away. And I can see because of the two parentheses, I am starting in intercept form. And what I want to do is I want to end up in standard form, which looks like this with everything multiplied out. So to go from intercept form to standard form, all you're going to do is multiply, and we reviewed this in our algebra review. It really doesn't matter if you do the negative 2 first. I don't know why I tend to like to do that last. 
So I'm going to FOIL or distribute out x times x. We saw that negative 2 out front, which is going to give us x squared minus 11x. Then I'm going to distribute that negative 9 to each of those pieces. Negative times a negative is going to give us a positive 99. Go ahead and combine our like terms on the inside. So that gives us x squared minus 20x plus 99. And then we have to distribute that negative 2 to everything. If you distribute the negative 2 in the beginning, make sure that you only distribute to one of the parentheses and not both. Because if you distribute to both parentheses, you will end up doubling your distribution and it doesn't have a multiplier of a negative 2. It'll be more. So our equation in standard form becomes a negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 20 is a positive 40x. Negative 2 times 99 is a negative 198. So in any problem that you're trying to go from intercept form to standard form, all you have to do is FOIL. And so if we want to go from standard form, all multiplied out, into intercept form, all we have to do is go the opposite way, which is going to be factoring. And remember, when we factor, we're multiplying to the outside and we're adding to the middle. We always start with multiplying. Think about all the different ways you can multiply to 110. 1 times 110. 2 times 55. Five. You're going to go through all of your options until you find ones that know not only multiply here, but add to here. So if I'm multiplying to a positive and adding to a negative, the only way to multiply to a positive and add to a negative is if both numbers are negatives. So in this case, it's a negative 11 times a negative 10 gives us a positive 110. A negative 11 plus a negative 10 gives us that negative 21. We've hit both criteria. So intercept form is y equals x minus 11 times x minus 10. And we've got it there in our intercept form. What is the vertex? Remember, we've talked about this a couple times now. The vertex is your point going from 0, 0. So those transformations moving from 0 to 0, I have gone right 9, making my vertex at a positive 9, and up 21, making the y value a positive 21. The last section here, what I want you to do is I want you to press pause and I want to see if you can correctly match the function with its graph. You have four different equations here, and they're all going to tell you a little bit different information. I want you to pull the information and see if you can correctly match them without graphing them in your calculator based on what you see here. So go ahead and press pause, and then when you're done, go ahead and press play and see how you did. All right, let's ho see how you did on each of them. Our first one is in vertex form, so we want a vertex that is right 1 and up 2. If I look here as right 1 up 2, it is going to go down and it's going to be a vertical stretch. So both of these are opening down, but only this one has a vertex at the correct location. Number 2, still vertex form, we want negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1, here we go. It's going to open down. So again, opening down, it can only be one of these two options. Showing that vertical stretch, that was a vertical stretch, so it's going to be a skinnier graph. Number three, this is the only one that has a fraction between 0 and 1. So this is going to be a wide graph because it's that vertical shrink. And we make sure that it matches. We have x-intercepts at negative 1, 0 and at a positive 2, 0. Remember, it comes the opposite when it comes outside. This one has x-intercept at a positive 1 and a negative 2, opening up with that vertical stretch. So we can match them based on the information that each one of our graphs gives us. All right, we are all done for today.